for coming on board. RC, what's up, man? I'm just taking notes. My, my, uh, you are the, per my co-host, you're, you're number two in the... Number two podcast. I don't yeah. know. Where does he get his stats from straight that's up? That's your guy. I know. <laughs> that's... Oh, he was, hey, he's, all, he's been all in lately. Yeah, he, he's unbelievable. Are yeah, we talking he's, about he's, 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 about yeah, the triumph. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When we we recorded today, and he's like, "Oh, I'm getting texts right now from getting some updates and blah blah blah." And it was so good. Uh, also joining us, Supercross champion, motocross champion, uh, three time, M- two yeah, time? three time, three time, three time, yeah. MXDN champion Ivan Tedesco. Welcome, welcome to the show, man. Right. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for coming in. It's been you, a while. I, I think I came on a long time ago. Yeah. You were going to come on with Preston and Wilbur, and they had another, uh, something came up. You couldn't make mm-hmm. it. That would have been a great show. But yeah, welcome, guys. Thanks, um, man. Thank you. Five years. Five years. Yeah. And we're here. And Finally. the bike is here. It's All real. Of idiots rode it. It's real. <laughs> it's real. It's not orange. <laughs> right. Right. Did you That's guys right. think we were just going to get a little piece today of the bike? I know. Right? <laughs> they were going to unveil a piece? You're a dick. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not. That, I'm not the marketing guy. So I'm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, uh, but no, listen, this has been a, a long time. Coming it has. And, and, and it's pretty cool, right? Like, um, yeah. I'll start with you, Ricky. Yeah, it, it is cool to see something. And then to see you guys, well, you've ridden it, but to see everyone ride what are you it. talking about? Today was his first time ever riding it. I was excited to see Chris Kiefer's yeah. first yeah. ever yeah. lap on right. a Triumph today. I'm glad we can I, I, I was, um, I, that, that, for me, that's what is so special to see people's reaction hoping that they enjoy it and appreciate it. I know that you guys appreciate it, but just seeing what uh, what has taken a while. And, yeah, I think it went well today. I was really happy. It's this guy did a lot, either, right? too. This like, guy yeah, did I mean, a lot. Yeah, I mean, we've been working on this thing for a while, and right? I feel like it's good, but until we had a day like today where other people can ride it. and First time you rode it, what, what was it? I mean, not, not the bike, not the completed bike, but just something with First uh, time... You know, 2020, with, right after Daytona. Was, yeah, but that, they didn't have an, a, a chassis there. It was just like they had a, what, was, a couple swing arms. That was my some, first experience working with okay. the team, trying yeah. to navigate what they wanted to do. Yeah. And then, yeah, from there, I just, you know, not not consistently, but it started ramping up from sure. there. Because I was still doing the pro, pro circuit testing for Mitch, you know. Right. And, well, I want to talk to you about that because you had a nice thing going with Bones and Mitch testing. Mm-hmm. You're working with Hamaker. You're working with somebody else. I can't remember. Uh, uh, Ryder D. Francisco. Mark Spanks a little bit too. Ryder yeah, before D. Before that. Right. So you had a nice little thing going in California and everything else. And obviously Triumph in Georgia and developing a new motorcycle. And, you know, maybe maybe things go wrong with developing a new motorcycle. I mean, probably before you had some – like you took a bit of a leap of faith, did, sure. didn't you? Did you feel like that? For sure. But by the time I had to make that decision, I, I saw the team they were assembling. That's what really intrigued me. A lot of the top, top-tier guys on this, on this program. And, yeah. Uh, and just getting onto something ground floor that really intrigued me. Um, yeah. And just being involved at this level, you know, I was doing the race team stuff. I've never been involved on, you know, from the production from the ground floor. So. Yeah. And RC, you told me one of the first calls you made was the hot yeah, sauce. Yeah, hundred percent. Yes, ap- absolutely. Um, and and tried calling Tickle also, but he was still active at the time, and and mm-hmm. and he could he he just declined. Uh, but uh, yeah, always wanted Ivan, of course. I mean, we got a great relationship, and he knows so much. He's so educated on what the bike's doing at a top level as well, not just uh, right. production wise, but a top level on the baseline. And I got to give a massive thanks to uh, Mitch from Pro Circuit because I didn't want to step on his toes. And I t- spoke to him. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, I spoke to him before and told him, hey, this is what's going on without going into too much detail. But uh, would love to, you know, l- would love to have Ivan be a part of this, but not step on your toes. And, you know, right. if you say no and, and get out of here, I totally understand that. But I didn't want to, yeah. you know, go you know, just my hey, loyalty. I was just talking to, I was just talking to a, a, a deal for uh-huh. The next, and, and I had to do a contract, and I was talking with like, Mitch. No, 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 oh. but I needed some advice. Mm-hmm. I called Peyton, yeah, like yeah. you know what I mean. Like, I, I never wrote for the guy, mm-hmm. I never worked for the guy, but I was like, I'm calling Mitch, yeah, right? Because I, it was a contract language thing and mm-hmm. some some annuities down the road. And I was like, What do you think? You, you yeah, know? There's, there's plenty of times I've gone to him, for yeah, advice, oh, dude. you know, just yeah, good, yeah. It, That's it's awesome. Funny when that you way. talk to him, and I mean, I've talked to him a little bit about my kid and just things, he's very black and white. Yep. He can yeah. tell you how it is. And then you go away going, okay, I know what I'm getting, right? And you, and he gives you that advice where you know what to look for. You're like, okay, I know I'm getting a good deal. He just tells you black and white. Yep. You know what to do yeah. and you know what not to do. Yeah. If that deal says this, 
you don't do it. If it says this, you take it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael, today, obviously, with I mean, we've we've known about the triumph for a while. We've known the, yeah. But you look at Ricky, Ivan, Jeff Stanton, Ivan Cervantes, Clement DeSalle, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Edmondson is doing mm-hmm. some durability stuff over yeah. over in the UK, and we'll, not maybe in him. <laughs> but like, they're doing it right. Like they're. I don't. I don't want to bring up other motorcycle manufacturers as yeah. guys who did it wrong. But I think we can think of some that did it wrong. Brand new bikes or whatever, inter, or bikes into the American market. Even seems like Michael. These guys are doing it right. Well, my biggest takeaway from today, after meeting so much of the staff, seeing through the presentation, realizing the openness of these guys, I understand now why everybody we're talking about in this room and and we're talking about this event would sign up for something like this. I see now what you guys all saw in this because definitely at some point I'm like, there's a part of me that is like, wow. What kind of paychecks do you guys get? How these guys all get convinced to jump on board this this idea, especially when I've heard talking to some of how long you guys have been doing it and how long you guys already signed up for beyond this. There's some serious trust there. But again, mm-hmm. after meeting them all, I understand now why you guys are involved in this and, and what they must have shown you to make this happen. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I shouldn't speak for Ivan, but I think that I can in this regard. You step in if you think I'm wrong, but... It starts with Rod, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, when, you, when you've worked with someone at another manufacturer for so long and you've seen the results, his words speak for themselves, and he is a man. If he says he's going to do something, he does it. If he says he can't mm-hmm. do it, he's going to tell you, I can't do it. So you build that trust in someone, and he said, hey, this is what's going on. This is what we are going to do. And, you know, it was a, it was a colonoscopy of questions that I had for him, <laughs> yeah. you know, because I just, I just didn't want it to be some half-baked deal. And, but I, not that I didn't trust him, but I had just had a lot of questions about it. Mm-hmm. And, dude, he, he answered them all, was clear and concise, and I, I never, I never double-clutched one time. And I feel like he's great at getting the right people in the right spots, yeah. you know, like bringing yeah. the right people together. And it's been like that. It's been really yeah. good. Now yeah. you tore your ACL a while ago. I did testing Triumph, I imagine, and then got it. Had to get it fixed, right? And now yep. you're back on the bike. So that took you out, out for a little bit. Yeah. What do you do during that time? Like, I mean, you're, are you weighing in on testing and your thoughts on things, or like? Yeah. I, so every test, I was there. Oh, you know, sure. and just doing what I can from the sidelines and communicating with the the riders yeah. and trying to bridge that gap with the engineers and the riders. And sure, it it worked well, you know. And uh, obviously, I I have some value on the bike. I've been doing it a long time, and. Yeah, we're back. We're back on the bike. So, um, just got back back on the bike two weeks ago. Oh, was it just two weeks ago? I yeah, that was yeah. That was today. Time. Was my third third day really, back huh? on the bike. So, so uh, we're gonna talk more about in depth about the bike later. Embargo life, but um, it seems like are you guys embargoed? Well, ish. There's an ish. This yeah, one's allowed. It was a big controversy today. We're, we're gonna <laughs> dive into it. But one thing I took away from it, and Michael, let you jump in too. Uh, <clears throat> everyone at Triumph is really happy with the horsepower to weight ratio. It seems like. From the bars to the tire to the frame, they're really worried about weight, and they want to be the lightest bike, which I believe they're tied for the lightest bike right now. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, they, they want to produce peak power, 250F. That's power is everything. And I think they did a good job of it, and that seemed to be the mission goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you yeah. agree? Yeah, it was, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, just to make the bike as light as they can and as fast as you we can. Had our, we had our reference bikes. And those are the those are the bikes that we wanted to be as close to or better than pos- as, as possible. <laughs> Uh, you know, different, you know, as far as a reference bike, as far as chassis goes and an engine goes and the 250 stuff, 100%. And that yeah. was our benchmark. And, and but, but it's no secret. All the manufacturers do that. So, yeah. and we did as much as we could. There's no uh, bad bikes anymore, I don't feel like. No. Michael, you would know more and keep Chris, like, there's no bad bikes anymore. There's better bikes than others, yeah. but you can yeah. make any bike good, yeah. right? Right. And but, everyone talks shit on Suzuki, but I feel like that that bike is needed right now because it helps the market because it's not as expensive, yeah. so it gets people in the sport too. But so look at Ken Roxon; he won on it yeah. two yeah. weeks ago. I mean, you know, right. yeah. This that, guy that bike his, is uh, that bike o, is oh one K- Cowie and kicked everyone's ass mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. Said it was the worst bike ever. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know it was <laughs> the nineteen ninety nine KX one twenty five. That one was <laughs> slow, guy. Really slow. Oh my gosh. Um. So it is. It is. There's 450 coming down the road, uh, yeah. but it's 250 to start. Uh, and I guess Ivan with PC, you've been riding a 250F too. So I mean, mm-hmm. you had a great career in 450s. You you graduated from the small bike class. But I guess like 
and between the PC and the Triumph 250, you've been back down to the small bikes for a yeah. long time. <laughs> I've done a lot on small bikes, and, yeah. and it suits my style. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say better on it. Yeah, I'm probably better on a small bike. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, I could still ride a big bike. I've had some success, but you know, the 450 is coming. I'm gonna, you know, be doing some of that development as well, and yeah. I'm excited for it. That yeah, that the 450 would be a, a, a lot easier and a lot less time, mm -hmm. you know, just because so much stuff is already developed that we don't have to develop. Again. So I wrote I wrote a story for Racer X coming out in the next issue. Ricky, mm -hmm. I talked to you about yep. it for Dave Arnold, who I like. I could talk to Dave Arnold for <laughs> hours. Yeah, I, I right. love Dave's memories. Fantastic. Have you Michael, have you done much with Dave Arnold over the years? A couple times. I've had lunch with him with Ross a couple times yeah. and just listened to just, the two of them. I could sit there for hours. I have lunch. so much respect for him when he told me about how he used to put the Honda Works bikes frames on a jig and mm -hmm. move them around and weld them all night and then test them in the morning. You know, I just, the guy's phenomenal. I'll start with you, Chris. How much have you worked with Dave Arnold uh, on the production side of things and, and what's your experience with him? Um, I don't have much interaction with Dave. He, he, he does you know, interact with the production team at times, but he's mostly Ivan's guy and Ricky's guy, so he directly goes to the race team. But a lot of his influence that he's, since he's been here, has leaked into the production stuff. So uh, even though I haven't seen it firsthand, I know Don't that it's, like, hey, it's, 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 it's been trickled down to us, right. so because of Dave. And Ivan mm -hmm. working with Dave? I mean, he's basically like my traveling partner when we go to Atlanta, oh, you know, we he? share a rental car, yeah. you know, get to... You know, pick his brain. I've learned a lot. Yeah. yeah. The dude's super smart. Yeah. yeah. He's an awesome dude, too. He's he's cool to hang out with. There's, like, know. nothing he hasn't done, man. <laughs> yeah, it's unreal. Right. His stories his yeah. stories are unreal. Unreal. And, I mean, even post-Honda, uh, Geico hired him. He worked mm -hmm. with Eli and John for a little while, right, doing their stuff. He went to Rockstar Husky for Bobby Hewitt, who runs the race team at Tron. I mean, Dave, yes, in the 80s, he was the man and all that, but he's still very relevant in now. He's influenced from the background, Yes. Quite a bit over the years. Yeah. yeah. For and, sure. And Ricky, I feel like the older generation like that, they still have so much to offer because even though engineering has picked up immensely, but I still feel there is an element to all of this to where the basics still matter. Mm -hmm. And those guys have done it, seen it. They did all of the work themselves. Not so much computer happening. They had to figure it out, mm -hmm. trial and error. And so I feel like guys like that that have that experience at that level are 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 tremendous. You, you help. need guys like him that are seasoned, that's been around. You just can't have a smart guy jump into our sport and expect it to be good. It doesn't work like that. You got to be around the sport. You got to be an enthusiast. You have to know. And then what's cool about Dave is he's just not stuck in his ways. He's strong minded right. about him, but he's open minded enough mm -hmm. to let things in. So that's what I think. And you know, like strong, uh, strong minded in a good way, and yeah. and and rightfully so, he should be that way because yep. it is probably best yeah. right no for sure yeah if you it's believe not strong-minded in a negative way no it, it he's yeah. he's right for it yeah. okay know, so man. take off your triumph hats here yeah you uh -huh. three <laughs> yeah okay. no problem and, and michael we'll start with you because you're unbiased i'm not even unbiased. <laughs> holy shit come okay. on what do you like about the bike um, I talked to Ricky quite a bit about this after I rode for a minute. Number one is chassis. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that comes from, I feel like so many of your current bikes, touch feel is becoming an issue, like slap downs, little stuff, just stuff you feel through your hands, just certain harshnesses you can't get away from. And then also bikes becoming a little bit knife edged, getting them so up on the nose, trying to get them to turn. I go to some intros and it's like trying to find the balance point with them sometimes is a little bit of work. I was super impressed out of the box at balance. And then I felt like that your guys' base setting was like a little bit almost conservative, like neutral. And then I wanted to see, okay, you know, like I was all these guys been going up on the nose, like how much can I make this thing turn? Can I change the yolks? Yeah, can I change the yolks. Yolk. Yeah. Yolk. Oh, when they have said yolks the first yolks time was over there, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm surprised I didn't hear scrambled st eggs and Yeah, I'm like, yeah. wait, what? Yeah. I'm surprised I didn't hear stanction more often. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for that one. Uh, Chris, what about you? Uh, um, Man, it's. For if, if I'm just thinking about it, I really enjoy the engine, honestly. Um, like Ricky said, there's been a lot of days where I've had a lot of the other bikes here. And then you break it all down in numbers. And for me, um, you have to have enough torque in 250 class, right? Because in the small bore class, you got to have an engine. You can have a bitch and chassis, but if there's no engine, then what are you going to do with it, right? So I like that we have actually have torque. And then... Not just torque, because you got to have something that pulls you around when you're when you're, you're hauling around around the track. So, for me, it has enough torque to get you out of a corner. I think about uh, us vet guys that get older. We're lazy. You might be in third gear. 
It has a good pickup. So like if you need to get back up in it, it's there for you. And then it just pulls very far. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a blend of it'll, it'll allow you to be a little bit lazy if you're lazy. And then it'll pull a, a fast hyperactive B kid that wants to rev out. You know, it, it allows that too. So it's a nice blend of an engine. Ivan? Yeah, I would agree with him. And on chassis, I think it goes down to that light, nimble feel. It really is a light, nimble bike. Yeah. And yeah. that engine only, you know, optimizes that. How, um, obviously, it's a production bike for made for many people. Of sk How much slower is it than a PC race bike? I mean. The stock production bike? Yeah. Man, I mean, hard, that's, that's hard. That's, that's a tough well, one. I know. I, I, well, look, I'm just trying to, like, obviously, we know, you know, what a, what a race bike is. But. I mean, this thing. Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. Okay. I mean, you, okay. rode, you rode Hunter's bike. You can yeah. answer Hunter's that question. Hunter's bike was faster. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, of course. Hunter's yeah. bike was better, uh, motor-wise. Yeah, but it's, the, it's, but the, the production train? bike isn't going to be a PC. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what do you, what do you, what, when you're testing a bike, and, and you know, you, you've got, you're like a new school guy. You've been, you haven't been retired that long, but you're, you, your reputation is starting to take off with testing, right? Whether it was with mm -hmm. Bones uh, and the, the PC team, which I heard a lot about, or now with Triumph, which I didn't hear much about, but we could see the product. You're becoming a real good uh, reputation for a test rider. So, um, and I've asked Ricky this question too. Like, you're also faster than 95% of us. Uh, so, how do you test for yourself? How do you think about, hey man, Tubby Mathis is going to ride this thing, and he's going to want this, or you know, a vet guy, or mm -hmm. what? Like, how do you act like that? Because well, some that, that fast side guys don't make good testers. That side of it's new to me. Right. Um, typically, I've only done the race team stuff, which is you know, go as fast as you can. And right. The closer I could get to their speed, I feel like it carries over to them, the settings. Um, so I would go as fast as I can. Right. But when I've been doing some production stuff, I try to just, you know, switch my brain. You yeah. know, go a little slower, try to think of how an average guy would ride and what would he want. Yeah. And I feel like we, we've hit it. And I thank God we have Chris. He's done oh, a lot of that. Go. He's yeah. done a lot of that work. Here we go. Um, so he's been super helpful. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, Was it always KYB? Yes. Was it always, yeah. like, from the... Mm -hmm. First time you guys got on it, yeah, yeah? okay, yeah. which I feel is a good package. Like, yeah, myself personally, I I think that KYB from uh, um, getting it getting the setting right, your window is a bit bigger. I mm -hmm. think that Showa does work good, yeah, but the window is much narrower, much narrower. Now that was at a professional level. I don't I don't know if it's that the same at a production level. And you guys have way more experience than me in that. But mm -hmm. is it the same kind of in in production? It's the same. There's yeah. a lot of comfort within a KYB. Yeah. And for me, I always say like a show is a performance based fork and shock, mm -hmm. like so, really yeah. good for toughness, right? Yeah. But if you need comfort, it's hard to get some of that with Showa. So yeah. KYB has more of the comfort side than yeah. Showa setting. Is exactly right. Uh, yep. Here's was it. it ever a cable clutch or was it always hydraulic? It was always hydraulic, was right? It? Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, See, always hydraulic. I'm a cable clutch guy. Are you? I hate hydraulic Oh, clutch. so Kiefer, yeah. I don't know what he did, but he Kiefer, got me my Yamaha you? and he got the, my bike with the GYTR hydraulic on it, mm -hmm. which is an aftermarket thing that Yamaha does. I'm never going back. Really? I'm, I'm, You're a hydraulic I'm, guy. I'm a hydraulic guy. Really? Why? Oh, wow. So then when I saw that the, the Brembo on the yeah. Triumph, I'm like, yes, hydraulic guy. I, I don't know. I love it. Love it. You know, Michael, you talked about like the deflection or lack thereof the d deflection. I will say this, uh, Chris, before you came on and, and was a huge help, we worked really hard on that chassis to get it to, to that spot. Mm -hmm. Hours and hours and like banging it in the engineer's heads like, hey, it, it, we, we, anytime we had that feeling... Mm -hmm. We'd be like, nope, nope, we got to get rid well, of this or I, something. I, I can imagine from your guys' standpoint, again, if you know, okay, we're going to use KYBs, we're going to use these tires, these wheels. There's a lot of parts out there you already yeah. know what what you're going to get from that. So yeah. what is it your guys' job to do? Make the chassis work, and if you know Triumph can build a good engine, I'm guessing that pretty much puts you in position. This is the thing yeah. that has to be right because – exactly right. Not to say the rest of it would be easy, but you probably had more confidence and hey, we can nail the targets on the other yeah. items. The, the hard parts of stuff that, that have to be manufactured that you can't just change mm -hmm. like that and pick to change, yeah. that's where we, we really put in extra mm -hmm. effort and, and when and really I mean triple checked everything in that department. Yeah. I have some complaints. Let yeah, me know go. when you want to hear them. Oh, yeah, hear go them. for it. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm I'm curious. The gas cap is hard to get off. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's, right? that's facts, though. Dude, I mean, gas is, cap is hard to get is off. It? I don't yeah. know what's going Torx on. Torx on the, on the YZ-125s, I used to hit it with my knee and knock really? it off. Yeah. Oh, so you, oh, so Tedesco's <laughs> coming and like, we did, we did that on purpose. <laughs> no, I'm just, well, Tedesco told no, the designers one day, that. hey, man, my YLT bikes, I knocked it off with my cap. So, <laughs> did so he? Is that why they I did. Yeah, you did it. I did it. Come on. At Bercy okay. Supercross. I used to do it during the week, and you know you know when you could put it back on. I don't know if I just have like big mitts or something, but it's so tiny, and you can't break it. Right. So do I blame Chris? No. I don't, know who, well, I don't even know whose department that would... I don't, it's none of our department. <laughs> okay, that's design. So that's that's got to be a design Design. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My second complaint. Torx <laughs> bolts to adjust the, the, the levers, the levers. Everything. <laughs> like, what are we doing? No one has Torx. Welcome, they don't to, make gra- welcome to Great Britain. Welcome. Yeah, they do. The European, it's Torx yeah, a lot. Great Britain. Yeah. Welcome to what? Great Britain. Not just Europe, but especially, I feel like specifically UK is a lot of Torx. Yeah, Torx. What are we doing? Anything good? You got anything good complaints? Um, yeah, you 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 told me you liked the engine. No, I did. Yeah, I felt You're like... You're like, dude, even me, it pulls I, me good. I, I'm way too heavy, and I felt like second and third. I it felt revs. Like are you a 250 guy now? Strong. I, I mean, tell, again, I'm way too heavy for it. You know? Tell RC and Ivan about your feeling about a 250. Tell them. Yeah, like... <laughs> like <laughs> This guy has been going on and, and, and about this stupid 350 that KTM has. And he's like, it's the great bike. It's Church of Three. He made some T-shirts and shit. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I rode a 350 years ago, and it was garbage. And I ride a 450 now. Yeah. And I'm not in the greatest shape. But today, on the 250, I was like not getting tired. as you, My arms weren't pumping up. Like at one point, I looked at my watch. I'd been out there for like 21 minutes, which is, trust me, guys. Yeah. 21 <laughs> minutes is the long most. <laughs> uh, and I was and I was not tired, and I was able to throw the thing wherever I wanted to go, and it was light. Mm. And I was like, "Is this like what's happening?" Right? Like, I'm like, I'm good. I'm still. <laughs> so is that a 450 to a 250 thing? It's cr- I-, I get more tired riding the 250. Okay, so there we go. I, do I need to get a 350? Yeah. But Yamaha, I love Yamaha. How do we do that? You better talk to him. Talk, <laughs> talk to TP. Better talk to him. Talk to TP. So, do you know what I'm saying? I, I really enjoyed that. Like, I I thought it was. So, great. do you think it was because it was a 250 or because of our bikes that good? <laughs> <laughs> He's got to tread lightly. He's a Yamaha influencer guy. here. Yeah, no. Listen, uh, I cleared this test with Yamaha beforehand. They're more than happy to. <laughs> here's, dude, let here, me ask. Here's my ahead. theory. So, yeah. I well, was thinking to myself out there, like, do I need to get? I was all in my head, like, do I need reconsider? To do you need to reconsider? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> do we got to go work on a new deal for you? I don't know. Well, Oof. the thing is, there's a guy coming in the room here soon. I think that could work that out for you. I, I mean, but then now I'm thinking of this guy in his damn 350. No, that he kept talking older about. guys maybe have trouble with technique, tired, uh, corner speed. I think the lighter, less powerful bike will help those guys. Our, I'm like RC, a 450. I can ride it smoother. With less like effort, effort, so I don't get as tired. But for you, I think it's better to go lighter with less power until you get better. He just called you old, yeah, slow. like slow. <laughs> <and all. laughs> See, I'm, fine. Dude, I'm really? Screwed no. I'm screwed up because I'm right in the middle. I'm not as good as them, and I'm better than you. So for mine, it usually has to do with track. If a track's tight, I love a 250, 450. Yeah. Makes me want to shoot myself because it's too much right. work for me on a tight track. Yeah. Big open track, give me a 450 right. all day. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I was all jacked up out there thinking about how much fun I was having and flick. Mm-hmm. And I was like, some of those turns, I was like, oh, I'm going to go inside. All right, just move the bike inside and go. You right. know what I think I like about the 250? Now I'm learning to like it better than the 450 is on the faster tracks, to your point, yeah. I don't I don't feel like I'm going so fast. Yeah, and like it's, I'm always <laughs> thinking something Something's gonna go wrong. Yeah, I'm always like all the time when I ride now. I'm always scared something's gonna go wrong. So I have I don't like the high speed. Yeah, hmm. it's um, weird. But you're probably going just as fast on the 250 though, right? I know or, that's the well, thing. Jeannie's got the just stopwatches. Like she can go yeah, in the back right? and look, and right? we can we can that's right. We can go back. I was, gonna, okay. I was gonna joke and say fourth gear on a 450 is scary. I feel like yeah. a lot of local tracks have gone pretty tight. Everyone's all shoved Dude. somewhere that's pretty open, and I'm, I'm if you're on a 450, you click fourth, you're like. I'm going for a ride. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No, I was really enjoying it, and I was thinking Good, to myself, man. I'm not getting on pump, and I'm not getting tired. What yeah. is going on? You yeah. know, because you just know how you feel. Well, right? I'm glad you popped your 250F Cherry with Triumph today. That was nice. Well, I rode Hunter's yeah. bike, but... Yeah. Uh, Ricky, for you, yeah. like... And, and I asked you this before, but not, not on this show. Like, mm-hmm. you're a bajillionaire, and you have 15 titles... And you've already got a full-time job calling Supercross mm-hmm. during the week. And mm-hmm. God knows those meetings. I hear that they have 18 meetings a week. So you're you're involved in those meetings. 
No, that's Weege and, and JT, oh, but okay. they, they sign up for those meetings. Okay. I keep right. telling them, like, dude, you guys are way too nice. <laughs> you guys are way too nice. Just ignore a few my, of those. My point is, is like, like your, yeah. your, uh, your plate is full uh-huh. and your legacy is secure, mm-hmm. and you don't need to work as hard as what it appears you're working for Triumph, like mm-hmm. from the outside. Like, yeah. So why'd you want to do it? Why, why'd you, you know? That's a great question. So at the time when um, I got the Triumph offer, it, was some, it came at the right time. Like I wanted to be part of something and build from the ground up. I had never done anything like that before. And I wanted to be able to share the knowledge and things that I have learned in the past with other manufacturers that I think could help produce what we did, to, what you guys rode today. So that was one reason why. And at the time, you go back, this is 2019 when we were having talks. I mean, I, my TV deal wasn't for sure at mm-hmm. the time. So that was one reason, you know, just having something to fall back on. And, and because I love it, not because I have to do it, because I, I enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy it. And it doesn't, it's, it's not hard physical work for me. It's time consuming. Right. But, um, but I also, you know, like... I give like bringing you on, you know, and bringing other people and putting them in certain positions that um, really they they do the work. So almost like a GM putting the right people in place. I like that's what I like to do. So they really do all the hard work. And, you know, I bust uh, Jage's chops all the time, but he does a lot of the work, you know, on the marketing side when it comes to my stuff Mm -hmm. and promoting stuff and things like that. So it's just, you know. I do do a lot. I spend a lot of time away from home, but at the same time, I enjoy it, and it's not it's not too much because don't if, I, if it was too much for sure, I wouldn't do yeah. it. I mean, I tell JH no all the time. That means like, hey, you want to go do this? I'm like, nope, no. And Chris, like, no. Nope. I I know we haven't been able to talk about it, but mm-hmm. you've been busy. Yeah, you th- this dude hates leaving the high desert. Yeah. <laughs> like he's like I make a joke. Remember E. T. the movie E. T. Yeah, and the longer E. T. was away from the planet. It's the first movie I ever saw in the movies. Oh. E.T. He shriveled up. Remember, he got all white yeah. and like all gross looking because yeah. he was away That was from him home. walking into Ontario Airport to come <laughs> here. Yeah, that's him when he leaves the high desert. Like yeah. the longer he's gone, he starts freaking out. And anyways, you've gone over to see a bunch. Yeah. You've gone to Georgia. Like you've been busy. Well, the thing what I wanted to comment with Rick, you were saying earlier was like, it's about people. Yeah. Um, you know how I am with people. Um, you meet someone. Um, you, I'm around them, you get vibes, you get all these things. And when I got asked to do this, you know, I met some key people and I wanted to be a part of that because of the people. The people mm-hmm. make the product, right? right? If the people are POSs, then I'm out. I yeah. look at the person first and then the product second. Right. So for me, what they were saying, they put this team of people together. Right. Mm-hmm. I saw that and I'm like, I would love to be a part of that. And we talked about it earlier, like, yeah. He goes in in these dinner meetings. He's like a damn college football coach. It gets me pumped up. You know, like how he talks and speaks. And then it's like motivating, you know? So like being around the people is what makes me be less ET. I go to these tests and I enjoy being around the production team. I enjoy trying to make stuff better. That's what I love. I love riding. You know how much I love oh, riding God, dirt bikes. Yeah. Like when I see stuff get better, I'm like excited, you know, it makes me happy. So that that's why, just because of the people, that's what started. Ex- you're, you're a hundred percent right. And, and to your point, yes, I've, I've been successful. I'm in a great spot, Yeah. but, um, you know, it's the people is why, why I take a 97 positions. Title, but, I mean, you got to <laughs> I, put everything else. I know. <laughs> dang it. Just not I want to redo, one. redo, but I, I'm not, and I'll tell you, I'm not a, I'm not a day to day. I, I, I haven't put in the sweat equity that these two guys have. But I'm more of a I'm I'm a thirty thousand foot view guy. I'm the I'm the brand guy, you know. I'm not I'm not going to do the day to day stuff. I'm not in like so. That's where I feel like it might seem like I'm super busy on the outside, which yeah. I am. Yeah. I have enough on my plate. I don't need any more. But you put the right people in place. I think someone told me this one time. It's like you know, a way to make yourself look really good is hire people that are, that are better than you. And a lot of people won't hire people that are better than you. Because they're scared that they're going to lose their position, mm-hmm. and I've never been that way ever, 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 ever. And I, so you guys are better at what you're doing than I'm than I am. So you 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 put the right people in place. That's what's fun to me. Putting and I, the right for people. you. You're living in California. Mm-hmm. The headquarters in Georgia. Obviously, European stuff going on as well. But 
So you're going to be doing a lot of commuting. That's yeah. kind of your deal. Yeah, just back and forth, you know, five days at a time, or yeah. you know, whatever it takes. Yeah. Could we see some Loretta's? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. That well, was we've quick. Been talking about that, that was boom. no hesitation. No? Dude. I've, I've had times where I'm like, dude, that'd be fun. Right. But I just know once I get there and I'm sitting on the line, I'll be like, what am I doing here? Yeah. yeah. You'll be it's like hot. me, like. Have when you, I have when you I ever raced, had that yes oh he has that every year it, it oh, sounds so you fun you talk about it dude Loretta dude think about you're it going this year. Oh, it was the first it was like the first four laps of the first moto at Loretta's and I said to myself I'm I am a, an idiot yeah. <laughs> what am I doing out here and I was yeah. miserable the whole time you're yeah. not doing a good it wasn't trying to sell them it yeah, wasn't no, right. like I thought it was and yeah. remembered it now the bikes were ten times I feel like Loretta's for me on a 450 the track is way too small for a 450 yeah. I could see that with these guys though Steve like. They're, when they go to these races, I feel like there's more pressure on these guys oh, yeah. than an average guy no, because Jeremy Martin they're expected to do it. Yeah, and he what? beat me at the area because yeah. I raced a pro sport. Yeah, and everybody <laughs> freaked out like Jeremy yeah. Martin beat Ricky Carmichael. Yeah, yeah like, that's what I'm you're saying. Like, dude, I'm just trying to. <laughs> I was probably hung over that day. <laughs> Who knows? Well, I did do Mammoth that weekend one time. Dude, I didn't have How fun. How was that? Yeah, no. It's more intense than racing yeah. in an outdoor national. Because it, you it's know cool. you show up, you need to win. Yeah. And if it's yeah. not a win, it's. Yeah. I didn't have fun. That's why I. Yeah, I'll be honest. Do you enjoy it? I still love it. Yeah, because really? I don't have the pressure like you guys do. But like, is it? Pr See, I don't know. Like, if it's the for me, I don't think it's the pressure. Like, I don't. I don't go there thinking, man, I gotta beat this guy or whatever. I just, fuck, I, I just don't enjoy that. But you guys did it so much, and that was your life, and you grinded day in and day out. I never did that, right? So I don't have that mm -hmm. feeling like you guys do, and I can see why. Like, it's gnarly. People don't understand. Not only everything that they got to do, right? But they got to travel and then they got to show up to the race and actually do the damn thing and have the job. And if they don't do it, Eclipsed. then you got all these people looking at you. It's yeah, under a microscope. MX, Vital MX forum starts saying, you know, Tedesco's <laughs> washed up. Yeah. Tedesco sucks. Yeah. Oh, I saw plenty of that, Dan. And I was, and hey, I was, I was so you guys up. are tripping on a like a six hour embargo. How, try five year yeah, embargo, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, no. That was brutal. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> that, was, him, that was brutal, dude. Yeah. Whether it was him oh, yeah. or you, I, I had some conversations with yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, uh, I. Yeah, just nothing, dude. You guys yeah. knew I Kona couldn't say silence. anything. Yeah, like, I think I knew about hot sauce for a while, but yeah, Kona silence. Just well, until Savachi screwed it up. Did Savachi screw it up? Savachi was on the show that day, I and know, he kind of just blew it out, and I'm like, I'm like yeah. backing away. Oh, dude, I'm pissed. I'm like, oh, permission. as soon as I heard it, I'm like, I'm texting. I'm like, <laughs> dude, so he can say stuff, and now here I am, been tight lipped people just ruining me on social media for no. I'm like, dude, this is. Why are you guys coming at me? I didn't do anything. <laughs> right. Uh, like Joey told me that's he had your permission, guy. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, I, uh, that's yeah, Joey's like, yeah, I'm riding. Right. I'm next year. I'm 450, and we're like, what? What? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, I, I was like, are you? I, knew <laughs> I that. know, right? Because yeah. like, right. you you just we ain't saying anything, dude. Right. Right. Um, but <laughs> anyway. 450's coming, and yeah, that'll be a, you know a chance to to ride that bike, and yeah, I mean, is it going to? Uh, never mind. No, you can't say anything. Okay, never mind. Yeah. We'll, we'll move on.